Shuna's church, they're all dismissed. <laughs> I think it's John's time, right? <laughs> Have to pick on Joe. I believe tonight, uh, who is Austin here on tonight? Six? So come and listen to our brother Austin. We're here, this is our Thanksgiving Sunday, and uh, we're here to talk about Thanksgiving. Let me see if I can get this, this microphone, this one bothers me. Hello? Oh, yes. yes. I'll blow you out of here now. <laughs> I was speaking with Pastor Austin just before church, and while we were talking, I was telling him that whenever, uh, over the years, I've learned that when I read the Bible daily, I'm always alert and attuned to look for sermons. And so my Bible, I always write it down. And in this one, I don't know, some years ago I wrote down Thanksgiving right beside of this, this psalm because it's a perfect Thanksgiving scripture. Psalm 103, turn to Psalm 103 and, and let's uh, uh, hear what it has to say. It really, it, it speaks of Thanksgiving with, with a mighty power because it tells the truth exactly as God would have it. So David was attuned to God when he wrote it and I think we should... Uh, take it to heart because it's a wonderful song. Amen. Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from destruction? Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfies your mouth with good things? so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward us, those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame, and he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone. And his place remembers it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to, excuse me, and his righteousness to his children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those who remember his com commandments to do them. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word. Heeding the voice of his word, bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his domain. Bless the Lord, O my soul. It's an amazing song to address, just what we're here for today, giving thanksgiving to the God above. And it gives us some reasons why, not all of them uh, for sure, because I don't think there's, you could write a book that big to understand all the benefits of God. But... It's important that we are always in a, a frame and a mind of thanksgiving to God because He's always doing something even though we don't know it to benefit us in our lives and to make things work the right way. You know, in Proverbs 9, 10, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Many people say, I can't understand the Bible. I don't understand the Word. That's the reason. Our country has forgotten the fear of the Lord. There's a lot of intelligence in Washington, but very little wisdom comes out of that. Right? You know? And sadly, that's the problem. We can educate all we want. Without the fear of the Lord and the wisdom of God, we have nothing. And we need that. If we want to understand His Word, we need to have the fear of God. Not the fear where we tremble all the time thinking of Him, but a fear where we understand that, you know, that those people that go against Him are in dire trouble. Yes. And at the end times, I don't want to see what happens to them. 
And so we need to encourage them to, to change, to turn around. And so we should remember that the fear of the Lord is where it starts, when we have to keep that fear, a respect for God, knowing that what he can do and what he will do to those who disobey all the lifetime. And secondly, I want to remember that God inhabits the praise of his people. That's in Psalm 22, verse 3. You know, if you want to get close to God, start praising him. You know, a lot of people get... Uh, depressed and they're down and all you have to do is start praising God it goes away yes. in fact it says in uh, Isaiah that, that it's the oil uh, for the morning the, the praising of God it, it brings out that and so we need to be on top of that because we are gods in fact in verse 11 it says for the heavens are high above the earth so great is his mercy toward those who fear him you know, so the fear brings us a blessing. When we have that respect for God, it, it encourages Him to uh, have mercy toward us. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I want His mercy. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. I always desire that more than most anything in life. In 17 and 18, it says, actually, before that, in verse 13, so the Lord pities those who, those who fear Him. In 17, but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear Him. You know, he keeps reiterating the word fear because he wants us to understand that the fear of the Lord is truly the beginning of wisdom. Because if you want to get to heaven, you want to be right with the Maker. Amen. And his name is God. Actually, the great I Am, right? But it's important that we, we start off with that because so often we get to the point as Christians, we think, oh, I don't have to fear God because I'm, I'm his child. Well, you know something? I was my father's child and my dad's. But you know something? I feared him. <laughs> if I did something wrong and I knew it was coming home later, I was scared to go home. Because I knew he was going to blister me. Maybe that would be the beginning of it. But it's because I feared him that I had the wisdom to live a better life. You know, sometimes we can let that fear of God drive us in the right direction. That's why we drive cars. It's to pay attention. If you don't, you can get hurt. And the same thing with, with life with God. If you have that fear, that understanding that if you don't do it right and you don't try to do it right, you're headed in the wrong direction. And God will punish in the end. And we need to be standing up and saying, I am God's. I am his child. And I need to set example that I am God's child. And so we need to live that kind of a life. And this I just give as a beginning for us to, to remember that, and also that this is not just today, it's Thanksgiving. Every day is Thanksgiving Day. Yes. You know, because uh, if you want to be in His good graces, we want to be praising Him. And if you want to be in His, His presence, we praise Him more. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like that. You know, I don't like it when I think I'm not close to God. Yes. And it's because as His child, I want to be in, in His good graces, but I also want to be close to Him. Yes. I want to feel His presence. I want to enjoy the worship that I have with Him. And so we should do that so that we maintain that close relationship. You know, I tell people, you know, how long can a marriage last? You never talk to each other once a month. Or if you, you say, you look nice one time a year. You know, something's missing. Even if you're lying, you need to say it twice. I say, we came in this morning, Jimmy Buffett was on the radio, and he was singing a song, and said, what was it, Gloria? You're not pretty? Yeah. You know, like, now, it's too, now, it's too bad you're not pretty. And I thought, good grief, what a vain man, right? <laughs> I'm far from that song, but if it's sad that sometimes we get to thinking that we're so good with God that we don't need to do the things that other people do. And we do need to. You know, we're not just a one person individually. We are as a relationship. But overall, we are called to the same... Uh, ways of living in the same standard of life to worship and come close to our holy God. And he gives it in his word of how, tells us how we should live. And we need to take that to heart. I, I never got to the point where I can say, oh, it's okay now, I don't have to do anything. Well, quit praying and see what happens. Yeah, not a good idea, but if you want to try God, that's a good way to go. He wants to hear from us. And he wants to hear praises. And he deserves praises. Yes. Yeah. You know, Thanksgiving is a good praise because if you just look at the things around you, you can find something to say thank you for a million times. Yes. You know, when I go out and get in my vehicle, I thank God. 
not just because I have a vehicle, which half the world doesn't have, but because I have a nice vehicle. God provides it all. And I think, wow, Lord, thank you for being so kind to me. You know, we should all think like that. Thank you, Father, you know, for the food I eat, for the air I breathe, for the bed I sleep in, you know, for the home I have. The world doesn't have that. We do. You know, in America, of course, being military, we call it the land of the great PX. Post exchange PX, however you want to look at it. What you couldn't buy anywhere else, you could buy here. You know, what how you couldn't live other places, you can live here. And so uh, this verse, we're going to start out with uh, what we've just heard. He says in chapter verse 2, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. That's what I've been talking about. All the benefits from God. You know, what are the benefits of being a Christian? Peace of mind. That's the first one I would think of all this. I have no fear. <coughs> You know, I have no doubts. I have no thoughts of what's going to happen tomorrow. God's in charge. You know, and, and that's important that we realize we have the best blessing of all. We don't have to worry about tomorrow. God is still on the throne and we belong to him. And so when we say Abba, Daddy, he listens. Sometimes my dad didn't really listen. My father in heaven listens all the time. And you know, we can be thankful for that in a big way because he has the ability to fix everything. No matter what it is, he can fix it. And we should say, thank you, Lord, for that every day. Thank you for the peace that I have in my heart. You know, thank you for the great people we have around us. You know, you can have bad people and be in a church. So we're lucky and blessed by God that we are together and able to live for God. And he put one way of it, forget not his, his benefits. And he starts asking, who forgives all our iniquities? We know the difference between iniquity and sin, and I'll tell you that very quick, a little thought that I have all the time. Sin is something we do without thinking. We do something and say, oh, I shouldn't have done that. That's a sin. Iniquity is something we have a habit of and we live with and do all the time. It's falling away from God. And you have to go to God and, and repent to get rid of it. Because it's, it's a life of living in sin. And sometimes things stick on us from the world when we walk through. And we have to get rid of it. And it's a good idea daily to have a, a take a, 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 I guess you say, take a, a list and write down a list of all the things going on in your life. And make sure that none of them happen every day if they're bad. If they do, there's something that we have a problem with. Besetting sins, the Bible calls. And we need to work on those things because it ruins our walk with God and our, it ruins our witness. Mm -hmm. But the thing he's saying here, he says, who forgives your iniquities? He does. Even when you have sins that you think are bad, they're all bad, but some of them sound worse. God forgives them. You know, we look around and see people in the world and we think, can God forgive them? <laughs> he says he can forgive everybody except somebody who curses the Holy Spirit, blasphemes. You know, I mean, what an amazing God. Like we talked about it a week or so or two weeks ago. Uh, how many times do you forgive somebody? Jesus said, what was it, 490 times? Doing the same thing. Remember someone come up and hit you in the eye and, and knock you down? You get up and he says, I'm sorry. He said, okay. And he turn around and hit you again and get up and say, I'm sorry. And you say, okay. And you do that 490 times? What a God we have. I think about 14 or somewhere in there, I'd have already killed you. <laughs> or died trying, you know. But I'm working on all that, you know. But the important thing is that we are working. And we do see and understand that our God is an awesome God. Because He does give us all those chances. And is always willing to forgive in those situations. And that's, that's an important thing because... I know I can't, I've never got to that point. In fact, I'm hardly like Peter seven times, he said, right? But it's important that we realize God forgives as long as we come to him and repent. Yes. Who heals all your diseases? Well, none of us would be in here if he didn't heal. I don't know about you, but I've had a few illnesses in my life. Less illnesses and more accidents and mistakes, I think. But uh, God's only healed me from it. 
And so we need to be thankful that we have a God because there's parts of the world where people don't call on God. If they get healed, it's because God did it out of his own uh, mercy for them because they don't even know him. They worship other gods. Sadly, they don't know the true God and have the peace and, and the joy of knowing that he does heal from all our diseases. That's one of the things that disappointed me in this whole COVID thing was call on trust in the scientists. Yeah. Not one issue on, by our, anybody in Washington pray to honor God. Yeah. Well, if you want to heal, who do you talk to? Yeah. The guy that's in charge. <clears throat> you know, I'm not going to go to the, the clerk at the, at the drugstore and say, give me my medicine. They, get it, they pick it out. I want the pharmacist. <laughs> Well, God is the ultimate in all those situations. And we have that, that right to go and ask for these things. I mean, that, that's an amazing blessing right there. I can call on my Father, and He will fix things. And if I don't get well, guess what? That may be the best healing I ever get. Because yeah. yeah. if I'm absent from this body, He says, I'm in the presence of the Lord. So, you know, sometimes we have to realize that everything in our life turns to, to gold. He heals us, or if He doesn't heal us, it's gold. Because we'll be in His presence. Somebody <coughs> gave me a joke this week. I forget who it was. And they said, the guy was going to heaven and talked to St. Peter. And Peter, he said, Peter, I want to take this with me. And he said, why? He said, this bag. He said, okay, bring that bag. So the guy went to heaven to stand at the pearly gates and they asked Peter, can he bring that in? He said, yeah. He opened up and looked in. He had gold. And he said, oh, pavement. Because <laughs> <laughs> all the streets are having a gold. You know, that's our kind of thinking. Who would want to take gold to a place that other streets paved with gold? That's how little our, our thoughts are when we think of wealth, isn't it? So we need to realize that everything that you could possibly desire or want is in heaven with God including him, the most should be, which should be our most important and greatest desire. He goes on and says, who redeems your life from destruction? Well, it's the same God, isn't it? You know, there's another thing. There's people, the countries in the world that have 700 and some gods. Which one do you call on for this one? You must have a, a group that say, well, this one could be called on these two, or this one, just call on God. There is one God. And he has all the power. And so he does redeem us. And he does, he says, you know, he redeems our life from destruction. And he goes on, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies? He does. Just being here today, how many of us can say, oh, what a merciful God. How many things have you been through that God delivered you? You know, whether disease or war, you know, all kinds of things. We've had the opportunities, not always desired but an opportunity to experience things that weren't fun. And God's delivered us through it. And thanks be to God. Somebody else, illness or, you know, an accident, all kinds of things that he has delivered us through. Mm -hmm. And uh, operations, all kinds of stuff. And I think uh, my brother here uh, had two or three problems in the last month, haven't you? Or Austin's had shoulder problem, back problem. Shouldn't climb the ladders, you know. <laughs> we never get over being silly or stupid sometimes. I, I have a few falls. My son told me the other day, he said, Dad, you got to stop falling on your head. <laughs> I don't know how exactly he meant that, but I, I, I agree with him. <laughs> but you know, God is always getting us out of trouble. He's always going before us and making sure we get through situations that we shouldn't normally get through. Because His plan for our life gets us through where he wants us to be. And he has planned our life, the word says, that he wrote down everything in it that we would be our life would be like in a book before we ever were. He planned our lives. So, you know, if we just trust him, we know that, you know, if someone sets a trap for us, he'll find a way to get us around it. Or just not let it work. Because our God's always getting us through these destructive moments. He goes, well, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like evils? What does he mean by that? Satisfies your mouth with good things. Food? That's probably one of them. But I think it's, it's the desires of our heart. You know, because he says he raises, he gets us up. So
so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Even though we don't eat always the right things, he finds that we usually have the nutrition we need to live and grow and be. And uh, Don Clark has always won me for not eating all the good things. Eat that spinach, you know. Eat this, eat that. You know, so I've got so I eat spinach just so he sees me. <laughs> of course, Don doesn't know and it really doesn't realize, he doesn't think about it. I have no taste. So it doesn't matter if I eat spinach or if I eat cheese. It's the same thing. Different texture, same taste. <laughs> I do it for him. But, you know, God gives us the nutrition to keep us going in life. He, he nurtures us and he helps us to grow and to keep strength and to be able to do his will. And, of course, his will mostly is to tell others about Jesus and to show others Jesus in our life. And so he says here, he does it, renew us, but that our youth is renewed like the eagles, if we're doing his work. If not, he may not be renewing it. And rightly so. You know, you get what you deserve, usually. And if you earn something, God's for sure going to repay it from where he's at. Because he tries to teach us to do it the right way. And if we follow him properly, things will be better. Blessings come more to those that are doing it God's way than those that are doing it my way. And so we need to remember, if you want more blessings, take them. One thing I always remember, I was preaching one time, and he said, look at it this way. If there was a barrel right there full of gold, and you, they said, you take all you want. Can you come up? Would you just take one piece and walk back and sit there? That's what it's like if we have God and we don't go and get all his benefits. We take one little piece and go sit down instead of take all you want. But take all of God. You know, he says his spirit is, is unlimited for anybody that wants it. What are we waiting on? Why don't we go get it and be filled to the max? That's up to us. These are choices we make because our way of living, we compare to God's want for us and we decide to do it our way instead of God's way. So we need to try and do it His way. It's more important than everything we do to do it God's way. Six says, The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. Are you oppressed? <clears throat> if you read the second chapter of Second Peter, you'll read it talks about Lot and how Lot was, was vexed you call it, it's oppressed by the demons and the evil going on in his day. Well, as Christians, if we're real Christians and living it, the, the things around us would vex us today. Because there's evil around us and the world's going more evil. And so we are oppressed. And God delivers the oppressed if we'll trust in him. He'll overcome it because Lot made it out. But Lot was, was disturbed by all the evil that surrounded him. That's why God delivered him out of Sodom. And so remember that God is going to deliver us even though we're oppressed from what's going on around us because your spirit should be vexed by all the evil. You know, you turn on the TV and about every third word is that they use God's name in vain. You know, I have to turn my TV off. I don't want to listen to that mess. But that's what it is. The world is turning more sinful all the time and we should be vexed constantly in our spirit because because God wouldn't have it. And we shouldn't have it either. He goes on and says, He made no, no he made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. He gave him his laws and he said, live this way. And he told them what to do in order to be right with God. And they chose not to. Too many times. Now we need to choose to do the right thing all the time. We need to choose God's way. And he says, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. I don't want to be around when the wrath comes. And he says, I don't have to be. Thank you. Right? He will not make us go through the wrath. But you know, we need to be hoping those who will, because they don't realize that even though it's good today, it won't be good on that day. You know, and so we need to be telling people you need, that they need to turn to God, that there is peace and, and real life with God. And we're living it as we are right now, most of it. 
He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. Boy, oh boy. What if God said, okay, I'm going to do to you what you've done to me? You know, oh, hell would be burning higher because I know I'd be there to fan the flames. Because our God's not like that. He forgives us even when we should be going to hell. He doesn't give us what we deserve. He gives us what he wants to give us, and that's his love. Because he, he is a God of love, and he holds back on everything that is bad for us to give us the good things. Because he loves us, and he desires to keep us well. And what a God that is. You know, when you think about a God, he can choose to do what he wants. Our God is a God of love. Now, I don't know if he chose that or not, but I'm sure glad he's God. Amen. You know, and being close to him is the best place to be ever in the world. Any Amen. place. You know, when you're with God, you can go anywhere and not be worried, not be in fear. And that's so important. I think that you can't have happiness or joy in life if you don't have that peace from God. Yes. And Jesus, they call it the peace that passeth all understanding. Well, it is. You know, in my life, I haven't lived a life I should have that peace. But he has given it to me through Jesus Christ. He has given me my redemption. And he's given me salvation. All of the benefits, he gave his son. Can you imagine that? He gave his only son that we could have these, these gifts. He saves us when we fall away, you know. And he saves us uh, through this salvation, you know. He says that there's a who redeemed your life from destruction. Jesus Christ is the redeemer. You know, he is the one that paid the price, and he is God in, in the flesh. And we can be so thankful that our God loves us enough that he sent his only son to die for us. And to die a horrid death. And yet, he, he didn't have to do it. He said, my life's my own. I can choose to, to live or die. It's up to me. So not only did the father want it done, but the son wanted it too, because he's like the father. He is the father. And we should be so thankful about that. He died for me. I mean, I could die for a lot of people. But, you know, I couldn't die like he died. You know, I'm looking. It's okay if I die, but I'm telling people, shoot the right place. I don't want to suffer, right? He didn't even deny that. He went right out there and suffered. What a man. The most perfect man that ever lived. Yes. And, and he loved us enough to go through that suffering. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we need to, to really take that to heart and say, oh my God, I couldn't do that. But he could do it all the way from heaven. Mm -hmm. Come down and die. So, you know, this, this psalm, really, like I say, it's all about thanksgiving. It's to remind us that, that we are God's children. Yes. And that our God is a merciful and loving and caring God, he's a forgiving God, and he makes appropriation for us to be saved and to get through all the things that come about in our life. Yes, yes. You, know, you can't be better off than that. Yes. You know, and he, he says, and I forget where he said it, I, I read it not too long ago, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills and all the gold is in the hills. Yes. So what are you going to bring him? You know, if you want to get him on his good graces, you bring him your life. And you say, thank you, my God. Here I am. Do what you wish because you did everything for me. I'm here for you to do what you want. And all he calls us to do is live for him. Isn't that a nice thing? Live for God. And usually in a pretty good way. I mean, I'm not, the, I'm not a king, but, you know, I live a good life. And God gave me that. And it's only God that can make things work out there. And so what he's telling us here today is be thankful. That's one of the first things he wants from us is us to appreciate what he has done for us. Yes. You know, and appreciation goes a long way. Yeah. Yes. If you know someone who appreciates what you do, you, you care for them and you think about them a lot more with positive thoughts. Well, he's done everything for us. And so we should think about him with positive thoughts and, and thoughts of of obedience and thoughts of service and thoughts of caring for him because he cares so much for us. Yes. And it's amazing. I find that just one holy, unbelievable thing. You know, in my life, I get up every day and I think, good Lord, you still care. You know, why? Because I'm not perfect any day. 
Maybe like Don says some mornings, I, I sin before I get out of bed. You know, in my mind, because I'm supposed to take my thoughts under, under control, you know. We should be so thankful that it, it should hurt us. The thankfulness that we have for God, because we should be in pain with, with the love we have for Him. The desire to be close to Him, to be with Him, and to serve Him, and to please Him. You know, I, I just go to bed at night and I think, oh God, I hope that something I did today brought you joy. Because he deserves it. Abundantly and, and over what I could ever bring. But all of us, we owe him that way. For he is a, a wonderful God and a great Father. And if you want love, there's no better <coughs> place to find it. And the ones that go there are the ones that are down at the bottom the most. When they get there, they feel, know, and understand exactly what God did in their life. Yes, yes. I, I identify with those guys, too. And that's why I'm still here, because God allowed me to live, because he saved my life. And so, you know, we need to, today, and, and plan for every day in a year, praise God, and say, oh, thank you, Lord, for your greatness and your goodness. Yes. Everything we see, we should say, thank you. Thank you for the bumblebees, you know? We don't, a lot of people don't even know. Two-thirds of the bumblebees or the honeybees in North America were killed over the last 10 years. And if we lose all the bees, we starve to death. Most people don't even think about it. But we haul bees around now so they can uh, pollinate fields because there's not enough bumblebees to make the, the, our food grow. And we just go on like nothing ever happened. Well, God's still feeding us. You know, if the bees all die, he'll still feed us if we're his. Remember to be thankful. Not to any man except Jesus Christ and only to God. Because his love goes beyond anything that we can ever think of beside. Because it reaches everywhere. He reaches, and he is everywhere. And he's outdoors. If you don't know him, he's out in here knocking on the door of your heart saying, let me in. Right? Let Revelation 3.22, I think it is. Let me in. Let me in. I want to come in and sit down and sup with you. I want to have dinner with you. Well, he wants to provide. He wants to give us. That's our God. He is an amazing and awesome God. And if we think about it, you could be on this topic for the rest of your life thinking about all the things he does for us. You know? Everything you wear, everything you have, you know, toiletry, items, jewelry, no matter what it is, God has let you have it. And, you know, it's amazing what we want and need and what everybody else in the world wants and needs. And we should just need one thing, more of God, more of Christ in us, more of the truth, more of the love, more of the caring for each other. Yes. You know, I find I'm I liking that too. Sometimes out of sight, out of mind. Not right. But it happens. So think about Thanksgiving. Read this psalm. Just think about it to yourself. It's an amazing psalm. Because it's a, a true holy word of God. And it sure fits this year and this time. Let us pray. Oh Lord God, we thank you. God, that you've given us your word in Jesus Christ and through this book to understand you and to know exactly who we are, to remind us of what we heard last year and probably forgot some of it. Help us, Lord, to be more true, more earnest, more working, more loving, more gentle, more kind. Father, more in love with you in every way we stand and sit and what we do. Let us, Lord, acknowledge you. Let us give you praise and glory. And let us give you worship in all that we do. For you are a true God. A true God of true gods. You are him. Yes. Father, bless you. Thank you for this day and for all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.